in a move that stunned and pissed off gamers today, EA, Electronic Arts, and their infinite wisdom decided to shut down yet another studio. This time, the victim was Visceral Games, the makers of Dead Space, Battlefield Hardline, and this new Star Wars game that Amy Henning, who was the creator of Uncharted, a big part of Uncharted, she was the head of. Well, today, news came down that EA used that axe and destroyed another studio, and now we have more game developers out of work. What is going on, guys? Randall Thor 19 the man with the million, back again with another video. And yeah, this was kind of uh, really bad to see. I, you know... It's surprising, yet not surprising, right? It's always terrible when a studio gets shut down, especially one that I enjoyed their games, you know? I really enjoyed the Dead Spaces, Dead Space 1, Dead Space 2. Uh, I consider to be awesome horror, action horror type games. I love both those games. Dead Space 3, the less said about it, the better. I even really enjoyed Dante's Inferno. And Battlefield Hardline wasn't too bad. And when... They were tasked with helming this single-player, linear Star Wars game, right? They brought in Amy Henning from Uncharted fame from Naughty Dog to kind of be the creative director. I'm like, yes, this is going to be great. A new Star Wars game for Visceral from the makers of Uncharted. I was like, what could go possibly wrong? Well, when you're EA, apparently everything. Because news came down today from Jason Schreer at Kotaku that they decided to shut down the studio, basically move the game into something else, hand it off to a different studio. So not only is the game kind of canceled delay, but it's going to be something completely different. And now Amy Henning, Henning has had like two games basically get the rug pulled out from underneath her, you know, <laughs> like Uncharted 4 and now this one. So let's look at the reasons that Patrick Sutherland gave about why they shut the studio down. He says, Our visceral studio has been developing an action-adventure title set in the Star Wars universe. In its current form, it was shaping up to be a story-based linear adventure game. That sounds absolutely amazing. That is what people want. Well, at least people my age, they want that kind of story-based linear adventure Star Wars game. How cool that would be, especially if it was kind of going after an Uncharted vibe, which, you know, why else would you hire someone like Amy to do the work, right? S everything is sounding good, but he goes on to say, throughout the developmental process, we have been testing the game concept with players, listening to feedback about what and how they want to play, and closely tracking fundamental shifts in the marketplace. So what they mean is loot boxes, Games as a service, where are they? They can't be in this story-based linear adventure. The, uh, the, when we made that deal back in 2013, the market hadn't shifted that way. Now it is. And now what gamers want is microtransactions and loot boxes and games as a service. They don't want a story-based linear adventure game. They want a open world with a mute hero where you can go and basically collect loot boxes and level up and do it. They basically want Destiny. They want Destiny is what reading this is. They want a Star Wars game kind of set up like Destiny where they can games as a service that bitch all the way through it. You know, that's what they want. And he goes on and con continues to say, It has become clear that to deliver an experience that players will want to come back to and enjoy for a long time, we need to pivot design. That's the key word. We'll want to come back to and enjoy for a long time. Because single player linear adventures, you play it once, maybe twice, and you never play it again. And apparently that design is not favored anymore, anywhere basically, besides maybe Bethesda. But they're even having trouble with Prey underperforming, Dishonored 2 underperforming, The Evil Within 2 underperforming, hopefully Wolfenstein 2 overperforms, because I would hate to see all of a sudden... Bethesda being like, yeah, we might need to new move to this games as a service stuff. So they basically had to cancel the game because it was an adventure game, a linear game, and they want it to be a game that you play and come back to every day. Are you ready for Star Wars PUBG edition? Because that's exactly what this is. Imagine a Star Wars game. The scum and villainy of the universe. Hundred people drop down on Tatooine. 
And you have to fight to remain alive. And you can buy all the loot boxes you crave. Imagine that's probably what this new Star Wars game will be. Some co-op, multiplayer-based, games-as-a-service, you know, game that basically everything is shaping up to be. Well, Sutherland goes on in that Visceral will be ramping down and closing and they're in the midst of shifting as many of the team as possible to other projects. Lastly, while we had originally expected this game to launch in our fiscal year 2019, we're on looking at a new time frame. Well, yeah, you basically cancel the game. So it ain't coming out anytime soon, right? Um, and Jason adds his own thing. He says, safe to presume that the new incarnation of Star Wars game will involve games as a service elements, as has been EA's mandate for quite some time. EA was not clear about the status of longtime Uncharted director Amy Henning, who joined Visceral to direct this particular Star Wars game after she left Naughty Dog in 2014. He said he heard rumors that Visceral Star Wars game was in trouble for some time. Well, now they decided to come in and kill it. Man, I mean, EA has a reputation for this. Bioware, even though Bioware is alive, they're not the same Bioware they were when EA bought them. You know, Mass Effect is pretty much a dead franchise at this point. Criterion's a shell of themselves. You can go back and look at, like, Westwood and all those other studios that EA bought and then basically shut down. Uh, it's never good to get bought by EA. They basically gut the talent there and destroy the studios from inside. So, it's honestly no surprise that Visceral Games has been destroyed. And it... I'm kind of worried about the future of, of, of studios like DICE, you know? Although DICE seems to be pretty safe because they are basically... They do everything with the Frostbite engine for everybody. But man, this one kind of hit me, though. This one hit me. I love Dead Space. Really enjoyed Dante's Inferno. Enjoyed Battlefield Hardline for what it was. You know, it was, I was always kind of like, oh, are they going to bring back Dead Space 4, you know? Like, always kind of like, maybe they'll do that at some point. Like, they brought back Mirror's Edge. You know, but now that dream is dead, and my desire to see a single-player linear experience Star Wars game directed by the director of Uncharted, the ones who basically started that whole genre in and of itself, that would have been so cool to see. It could have been a great game. Instead, we're going to end up with a Me Too game, a game that is basically multiplayer co-op in nature, with a MMO style story and structure that features games as a service, microtransaction, and loot boxes to keep you playing for months on end instead of one really cool, really highly focused narrative single player game. And that actually quite saddens me because, you know, the longer we go, Phil Spencer's, you know, statements about how single player is kind of on the way out. You know, when he said Horizon and Zelda didn't have the impact they once did. Every month that goes by is starting to look like he it was telling the truth. I mean, this is this is a shot in the head to single player games. You know, visceral closing down. And you know, we you think back ten years ago about what the video game industry was and what the video game industry is right now, who knows in ten years from now what it's going to be like. Will there even be any single player games left? It's a sad, sad day. Because I don't only think about all the people that lost their job today and stuff. I'm also thinking about the impact this will have on the industry itself moving forward. If EA sees no value in these single player games and Bethesda is seeing minimal returns for their stuff. It's only a matter of time before basically everybody in the industry is on that games as a service trend. And why are they on that trend? Because it apparently works. Because they make money from it. Right? I mean, Shadow of War sold at least 400,000 copies just on the PC. Not even talking P you know, Xbox or PS4. Doesn't seem like a lot of gamers are that upset about loot boxes. It seems people, just the vast majority of people, not the hardcore, are okay with it. Sad days. Sad days. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments below about EA shutting down yet another studio giving the axe to Visceral Games. Were you looking forward to the Star Wars game? Are you a lover of Dead Space like I was? Man, Dead Space 1 and 2, such great games. I really, really kind of wish they would remaster those two games too. I really would love to replay Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2. 
on my Xbox One X with new achievements. That would be incredible. Those games are so good. Let me know what you think about the Dead Space series in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Share this out on social media. Hit that share button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already or if you're new. Hit the notification bell so you're always notified when I post new content. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I hope everybody has a fantastic rest of the day. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Later, guys.